Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry, a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher X video. All right, guys, I was going through the analytics this week, and this video I'm about to check out is the most watched video that my subs are currently checking out. And the title caught my eye because it's called Historical Facts That Mess With Your Sense of Time. So this is by a channel called Casual Lectures. Don't think I've covered anything by them, but holy cow, it's been out five days. It has 1.3 million views. I don't know how that's even possible. Our original video link is gonna be down below. Make sure you're supporting that. And let's check this out. All right, here we go. When we try to put historical events into perspective, we often simplistically divide things into old days and modern times because our brains can often struggle with the perception of time. I compiled a series of yeah, interesting true. facts on historical events that surprisingly took place at more or less the same time, turning them into real and pretty fascinating yeah, coincidences <laughs> and will make you think twice about how you perceive the past. Cool. Number one, Blow my mind. the same tortoise belonged to both Charles Darwin and Steve <laughs> Irwin. Harriet the tortoise was reportedly collected by Charles Darwin during his 1835 visit to the Galapagos right, Islands the as SS part of Beagle. his round the world survey expedition. Then trans yeah, I mean, it. well, tortoises, they live forever. Don't they live, they live way longer than humans. Don't they live like 180 years or something crazy like that? Yeah, Darwin's clear back in the 19th century. And of course, Irwin, rest in peace, man, um, is uh, within our century or <laughs> decade. What, what, what year did he die? It was right after the two, right after the millennium, right? Like what, 2010? Remind me. Transported to England and then brought to her final home, Australia, by a retiring captain of the Beagle, the yeah, ship they... Darwin used for his expedition. That's what... And as we all know, tortoises can live quite a long time. Yeah, how long? And by a hilarious turn of events, Harriet turned up in Steve Irwin's zoo. That's right. <laughs> the pet tortoise of Charles Darwin was adopted by the legendary crocodile Aww. hunter. However, some doubt was cast on this story by the fact yeah, that Darwin had never visited the island that Harriet originally came from. Anyhow, Aww. she had an estimated age of 175 by the time she finally died at Steve Irwin's zoo. Number two. Okay, so yeah, that was nuts. Um, the because I gotta gotta plug in the history here, right? So that famous voyage of uh, for uh, for Darwin goes out to the Galapagos Islands and studies the life there. Galapagos Islands is really famous for being an island with a lot of what do they call that endemic species? The one. The one where it's like unique to one very specific location and like like there are species that live on the Galapagos Islands because they're very remote that don't exist like anywhere else. And that provided some of the uh, research and ideas behind Origin of Species, which um, really was a groundbreaking publication for uh, breaking into uh, uh, natural selection and speciation. So anyway, there's your history. All right. The oldest tree. And mammoths. Ooh, okay. Today's yeah, oldest I mean, tree, living tree like was already 1,000 years, years old when the last woolly mammoth died. The world's oldest tree is a Great Basin bristlecone pine located in White Mountains, California, and is dated at around 5,000 years old. Oh, to crazy. put that into perspective, isolated populations of woolly mammoths on yeah. Wrangell Island didn't finally go extinct until 4,000 years ago. With the small island in the Arctic Ocean serving as a sanctuary for the great beasts, after they were forced from the mainland by humans and climate change. Number three. Well, yeah, so so that's, you know, definitely obviously on the other side of the, the last ice age, is after the last ice age where you start to see a lot of human patterns and migrations and animal migrations really change shape. And you see people, you know, uh, go from, you know, Northern territories, say like in Asia, for example, where you would hunt big game like this, right? Like the mammoths and as the ice age ended, uh, it's, it, it changed uh, migration patterns. People started coming into the Americas, you know, uh, in, in higher numbers that had already been there uh, before that because of the, the land bridge, right, between Russia, what's today, Russia and Alaska. Uh, but, um, yeah, so it, it, it kind of goes into there. So, yeah, they were, they were hunting those, and then, you know, they go extinct because of the climate change, and there you go. Three, woolly mammoths were still alive while Egyptians were building the pyramids. Mm -hmm. I think this fact is I mean, more 5, popular nowadays, but I still want to include it since it's a true classic. Yeah. Scientists have determined that woolly mammoths were still roaming the earth until about 1650 BC. 
Meanwhile, the oldest of the Great Pyramids in Egypt, the Pyramid of Djosa was constructed between 2630 BC and 2611 BC, meaning that while man was busy building some of the most incredible structures ever great. made, woolly mammoths were still doing their thing. Yeah, Number yeah so uh, we're about to start school here. Literally, my first day back with students is tomorrow. And uh, we get to Egypt is day two um, in, our, in, in, in my pacing. And it, it's always interesting to the, the, the kids, you know, the students that the pyramids are like the oldest structures um, in Egyptian history. You know, you'd think it would be like, you know, very gradual. And yeah, like the Great Pyramid was not the first pyramid. But we're talking about that age. But in the Middle Kingdom and New Kingdom, they didn't build those structures. A lot of reasons for that. They're very expensive is one thing. They get looted. Um, and actually, the building of the pyramids might have been one of the things that uh, that helped the or led to the old kingdom collapsing was because they are so expensive and they don't really bring in revenue. Say like a ziggurat in Mesopotamia, which is used as, you know, it's a temple and people bring in money and it's used as a financial center. The pyramids didn't have that. So they, the, the, the Egyptians are a lot smarter to be like, stop doing the pyramid thing. Oh, and let's hide actually our dead pharaohs. Go down south to the, you know, the uh, uh, Valley of the Kings, that kind of thing. All right, Mahatma Gandhi and Jack the Ripper I guess that's just because it sees like Jack the Ripper is very old. I mean, that was young Gandhi, but Before okay, okay, okay. Mahatma Gandhi and Jack the Ripper, Gandhi is so bound up with the titanic events of the 20th century that it might be peculiar to imagine him as a dapper Indian gentleman of Victorian society. But that's exactly what he became while studying law in London. Oh, Arriving yeah, that's in right. September that, 1888, that right in the midst of the Jack the Ripper killings, Gandhi oh. obviously had nothing to do with the Jack the Ripper killings. But it's funny to think about that? the fact that Gandhi could have become a suspect in the most famous murder case. <laughs> yeah, Gandhi. So Gandhi was um, had some a little bit of nepotism going for him. His father was kind of like a clerk working for the British because uh, that was under the British, you know, uh, British rule in India. And, you know, the British like to rule their empire and a lot of their colonies indirectly. What we mean by that is you use people locally that basically work on your behalf. And those people that work on your behalf, those Indians would also get, you know, uh, um, privileges for that. One of them, like what Gandhi was able to experience was like a Western education. So like Gandhi, for example, was able to be able to uh, go to law school in London, get like an elite education. Um, that was one of the benefits he had. So he got to go over there, spend time in London. Then he practiced law as um, a lawyer actually went down to South Africa, another colony, right, of the British back then, eventually going to India. And interestingly, and kind of an irony, using those same skills he learned from British education to push for independence uh, for India. That actually happened in a few places, by the way. Five, Nintendo was founded when Jack the Ripper was oh, still on the loose. Nintendo's way Even older than they the made Ripper games. And Nintendo were around during the same time. Made playing he cards first. never got first. the chance to play classics like Zelda and Mario. They originally made playing cards called Hanafuda, right. and the company was founded way back in 1889 when the infamous Jack the Ripper was creating havoc blow on your the mind if you didn't know London. Nintendo history. His murder huh? spree happened only about a year before Nintendo came into existence. Number six, <laughs> Star Wars. Yeah, I don't really know. I, I know about the Nintendo being early stuff, but I don't really know a lot of what they were doing kind of before or like, OK, they did the, the, the cards back in the 1880s, but then all the way up to the uh, 1980s. I know they had the Game & Watch, you know, kind of portable thing before the NES, but like a lot of like the early 1900s. I don't know much about that era. Let me know if you know down below. All right, Star Wars. Star Wars came out the same year as the last guillotine execution in France. 70s, yeah. When thinking right. about guillotine executions, our minds wander to historic figures like Napoleon. But this form of execution isn't that old. Star Wars premiered in the United States on May 25th, 1977. <laughs> shoot him. At the same time, this futuristic sci-fi was wowing audiences around the world. The medieval practice of death by guillotine was still taking place in France, where Hamida pimp killer Jandubi was beheaded for the torture and murder of a young woman. This was the last use of the guillotine in France. Nobody else has been executed using any means since. So technically, it is possible that people were talking about the upcoming Star Wars movie, while watching the last guillotine execution. <laughs> Number uh, that story is interesting too, because from what I understand as well with that in the 70s, um, first off, I think he got to choose that, like he chose that execution. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was actually the last execution France did at all, under any means, and it was done by uh, execution there, or by, by guillotine, so.
The National Razor, as it was called back in the French Revolution. Seven, you could take the London Underground to the last public hanging in the UK. We continue on with the topic of public executions, shows? but we travel to Britain. Hanging used to be a common punishment in the UK you and wasn't that. abolished until 1868. Michael Barrett was the last to be executed in this manner in Newgate Prison, London, in front of a large Look crowd of people. <laughs> Five years earlier, in 1863, the first journey of the London Underground took place. With a station in operation close by the Newgate Prison, it is entirely feasible that many that Londoners like, would then? take the tube to go and watch somebody get hanged. So it's like, it's totally different than what you'd think with the subway, if that's closer to what it looked like. I mean, it makes sense because the British basically invented the train. Um, but in London, that's not going to work very well because of how crammed it is. You want to get that underneath. But yeah, that was cool. I, that, that was something I definitely learned here today is a little bit about the subway system history of London. I did not know it went clear back to the 1860s. That's crazy. And it looks just like a like a train car. I mean, it is a train car, but like like an open air one, you know, like you'd put coal in or something. What a very convenient situation. Number eight. Prisoners arrived at Auschwitz just days after McDonald's was founded. Mm. While McDonald's is traditionally associated with the good times <laughs> and affluence of 1950s America, the very first restaurant was opened much earlier, on May 15th, 1940. At the yep. same time, one of the most gruesome in events Auschwitz. in human history began in Europe. In gate. Just five days after McDonald's grand opening, the first prisoners arrived at the Auschwitz concentration camp in what is now Poland. Number nine. All right, you're going to look at McDonald's the same way. Hope you don't. Next time you eat your Big Mac, don't attribute that to the horrors of the Holocaust. Okay. The fax machine was invented the same year the first wagon crossed the Oregon Trail. We all know the story of the Oregon what? Trail since it's an important part of American history. However, what many don't know is that at the same time the first wagon traversed this trail, an important technological milestone was achieved. Very proto the original fax, fax machine, machine yeah. the electric printing telegraph, <laughs> was patented telephone. in 1843 by Scottish inventor Alexander Bain, the same year that about 1,000 people set off west for Oregon, forming a huge wagon train. Number 10. So I got to learn more about that, about how that worked, because, I mean, that that's going to coincide with, you know, you're going to be getting uh, the getting uh, Telegram soon and stuff like that. I, I'd be interested to know. Let me know down below. Uh, what was that fax machine actually like? I had no idea that was something similar to that that early. All right. Oxford University existed for hundreds of years before the Aztec Empire was founded. I have heard of this one because... Uh, well, Oxford is very, very old, goes back to Middle Ages. And the Aztec Empire, for a lot of people, might be uh, uh, earlier than you think. The you university know, 13, existed for hundreds of years before the Aztec Empire was founded. The Aztec Empire began as an alliance of three Nahua Altapetl city-states. Yep. These three city-states ruled the area in and around the Valley of Mexico from 1428 around until the, the combined forces like of the Spanish conquistadors and their native allies under Cortez Hernan Cortes defeated them in 1521. Aztec culture had rich and complex mythological and religious traditions, as well as achieving remarkable architectural and artistic accomplishments. And of course, did all that engineering without two major things, metal tools and uh, work animals. Absolutely incredible what happened at Tenochtitlan. Plus, remember, their capital's on an island. They had to build roads, uh, or had to build, uh, sorry, causeways, wooden causeways that got there, drain swamps, the horrible geography to build a city on. Meanwhile, in England, Oxford University was already well established. Yeah. It has no known date of foundation, but there is evidence of teaching it's as way far back Aztecs, as 1096, yeah. making it the oldest university in the English-speaking world and the world's second oldest university in continuous centuries. operation. It grew rapidly from 1167 when Henry Oxford. II banned English students from attending the University of Paris. Number <laughs> 11. Harvard University didn't offer calculus classes for the first few years after the school was established. Okay. Modern calculus. I mean, yeah, Newton had already invented calculus. Discovered it, I should say. You don't really invent calculus. Calculus right? was developed in 17th century Europe by Isaac Newton and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, who, independently of each other, first published their findings around the same Leibniz time. Leibniz got thrown under the but bus. But elements of it appeared in credit. ancient Greece, then in China Went and the Middle to, East, uh, and still later Newton. again in medieval Europe and in India. Harvard was established in 1636 and is the United States' oldest, oldest yeah. institution of higher learning. And I always its forget history, that, how old it is. and wealth have made it one of the world's most prestigious universities. I remember the English didn't show up till like 30 years before this. <laughs> just shown up. 
right? And they started further south, you know, down by Virginia, right? Jamestown. Um, Harvard's up in the Boston area, so uh, that's what that next wave that started to settle up north. And its history, influence, and wealth have made it one of the world's most prestigious universities. Calculus was off the curriculum for the first few years for obvious reasons. It hadn't been recognized yet. I find it astonishing that Confirmed the oldest yet. university in the United States is even older than such an important scientific breakthrough. Yeah, so Number 12. Ecstasy was invented the same year the Titanic sank. <laughs> the unsinkable Titanic sank in 1912, going down in the North Atlantic Ocean, four days into the ship's maiden the voyage from Southampton it. to New York City. He was tripping. In the same year, pharmaceutical giant Merck was interested in developing substances that stopped abnormal bleeding, and one of its chemists, Anton Kollisch, synthesized MDMA to avoid a patent by German rival Bayer. No the drug was of no particular Salmonella interest styles. to Merck at the time, oh, and they only came back to research the substance sporadically over the next few years. It wasn't until 1975 that psychoactive effects of the drug began to be taken seriously <laughs> and recreational use <laughs> spread People thereafter through tripping. personal networks of psychotherapists, psychiatrists, users of psychedelics, and yuppies. So yes. Dude, the early 1900s were just wild for drugs. That's when they were making up everything, right? It's part of the Duster Revolution is uh, the mass production of chemicals and use of chemicals. But yeah, they started, yeah, cocaine and ecstasy, um, pretty much everything you think you think about and it's raw, it's probably its harshest forms back then. And doctors used to just like prescribe that out to everybody. Meth, right? All the painkillers and stuff like that, like just went out. Addiction must've been crazy when it didn't even hardly have a name at that time for those, you know, types of, uh, um, you know, drugs like that, pharmaceutical Everyone ones Everyone like who that. died on the Titanic never got the chance to taste this drug. Number 13, <laughs> nope, Microsoft was founded while Spain was still a fascist dictatorship. A highly controversial figure within Spain, Dude, Franco, Franco was, in power was seen for as a divisive ever. leader. Supporters credit his strong anti-communist and nationalist views, economic policies, preservation of traditional Spanish practices, and support of the monarchy of Spain as positive influences over the nation. Isn't it amazing how quickly nationalism was like like reformed after World War One? It's like World War One you would think would be the thing that would destroy the notion of nationalism being like like a good thing, right? Because look what it did as one of the main causes of World War One and why it was so deeply committed by the population. But again, you have places, you know, these fascist dictatorships happening all over the place. Um with Franco being the, the one that lasted the longest, actually, when it comes to actually ruling, of course, Hitler doesn't go very long. Japanese leadership doesn't doesn't go very long. Uh, Mussolini doesn't make it to the end of the war. You know, marriage him as an autocratic dictator who violently suppressed opposition and dissent, banned culture seen as non-Spanish, used concentration camps and forced labor and provided much support to the Axis powers during World War Two. Franco ruled Spain as a fascist state like their, uh, until audio his death drop. in 1975, aged 82. This was the same year that Microsoft was founded by Paul Allen his and garage. Bill Gates and the beginning of a new era in computer NorCal. technology. Number 14. Artist Pablo Picasso died in 1973, <laughs> the same year. Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon was released. You know, when I was, when I was younger and didn't really know a lot about art history, it was hard for me, and let me know if you're like this, of keeping the historical dates of, you know, the famous painters they get talked about, right? It would have been easy for me to be like, oh, Picasso and like Van Gogh were probably around the same time. Well, no, uh, he was in the 20th century, right? And all his famous works came out of that, influenced by Guernica, like Guernica and other stuff. Um, and learned a lot about him when uh, I was able to, to tour Europe and see his stuff in uh, both France as well as in uh, Barcelona. But yeah, he's a lot more modern, because usually when you think of famous painters, you don't think of anybody modern. <laughs> Pablo Picasso is regarded as one of the most influential artists Guernica, of the 20th yeah. century. Among his most famous works are the proto-cubist Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, 1907, and Guernica, 1937, a dramatic portrayal of the bombing of Guernica by the German and Italian air forces during the Spanish Civil War. Unlike some other great artists... By the way, before we get off that one... You know, growing up, and if you're like me too, you might be like, wh like, what's the deal with Picasso, right? Like his art style looks wild, doesn't look accurate. And then I actually, I started to learn about it. My brother is an art major and we went to, I went to Europe with him and he was telling me all about this stuff. 
right? And he uh, was was saying you can go to one of his museums. I think it was the one. Shoot, I forgot if it was the one, the the big one in Barcelona or in uh, was it Nice or Cannes? Were they the one? But uh, you know, look at his evolution of painting. At first, it was all the typical art. Like he he could paint anything insanely accurate. Like he he progressed beyond like what you could do of just making realistic art. And he started to change that. And then I remember hearing about like the cubism and this kind of stuff and what you're seeing here. It's like, man, everything looks weird. And the idea from what I understand was, you know, paintings are two dimensional. And in a way, what, what uh, Picasso was trying to do was to be able to include different parts of an object that you wouldn't normally see, or that you would maybe norm may see like in 3d and, and in person, but apply that to a two dimensional image. So it, it shows like parts of whatever the object is um, that you, you know, you wouldn't be able to see if you were doing, you know, normally like a, like a 2d picture. So it brings like almost like three dimensional art into two dimensions. If that makes sense. Looking at that, if you're following me, once you do that, you'll get way more appreciation for Picasso. ...and Italian air forces during the Spanish civil war. Unlike some other great artists who died young, Picasso lived a long and full life he until he passed he's, away he's in 1973, which was, old. coincidentally, the same year that one of the most groundbreaking and progressive albums ever was released, Dark Side, Dark of, Side the of the Moon by Pink Floyd. With most an influential estimated 45 ever. million copies sold, it is Pink Floyd's most successful album and one of the best-selling worldwide. Was he influenced it influenced by Picasso? and re-released several they? times Sorry. and covered in its entirety by several acts. It produced two singles, Money and Us and Them, and is often regarded as one of the greatest albums of all time. I would love to play you some pieces of this album, but that would most likely end with the takedown of this video. It would. But let's be real. If anyone here doesn't know Dark Side of the Moon, you are more in need of a lesson in culture than in history. And finally, number 15. <laughs> I feel like this guy put that in. He's, ob he's obviously like a Pink Floyd fan. He made this video just because he wanted a way to like... To plug Pink Plink Floyd, and then built like all this other content of this video around it. <laughs> all right, what do we got? Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows was published in the summer of 2007. That's the not same hard to believe for the me. The first at least. iPhone model was released. Was I, the seventh was it and last with book in the Harry Potter series, those? Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, was released in 2007, ending the series that began in 1997 with the publication of Harry Potter. Well, the first one was clear back in 97. Stone. That same year, something I thought came it was maybe like that three, four years done after. more to kill children's interest in reading more than anything else. The first iPhone. Then the iPhone destroyed Considering books. <laughs> that the first iPhone seems like a vintage phone now, it's impressive how fast time goes by. And that's exactly why I included this out. fact on this list. That was almost 20 first years was the ago. 3G, and at least to me, this the really feels like whatever. another era. But that is it for first today. IPhone. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank All you right. so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. It looks like he's got some other video. Uh, got some other videos too. Why it was amazing to be a gladiator. The crazy assassinations of Fidel Castro. Let me know if you want me to check those out. All right, final thoughts. Okay, cool concept. I really like that. And I learned about a bunch of them. About maybe about a third or half of them. I was like, holy cow, yeah. Because I, I didn't think of things that way. And it shows you again how interesting history is, and how many things are going on at different times. You know what I mean? Like. Like you think of Oxford as like this modern university. And then usually when people think about the Aztecs, they think of more like primitive cultures or whatever. But you got to understand how the world developed in such different ways on different parts of the world. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, it can be hard to keep track of all this stuff, first of all, in history. That can, that can be hard. And we try our best to teach, you know, by way of cause and effect. But it's important to, you know, like, like this becomes hard as a teacher because it's kind of like, you know, like, do you, do you teach things in that, that flow really well? Like here, here's one of the hard things, honestly, that a lot of like world history teachers have is when do you teach the pre-Columbian Americas? Right. So like technically, if you were to go like chronology, it'd probably be about maybe right when you, uh, you know, cause you probably want to start with like the Maya and you do a little intro, maybe with the Olmec or something like that, but maybe like right after your Rome unit, but that doesn't flow at all. You know what I mean? Like going from Rome to then hop overseas and like, all right, now we're going to talk about the Mayans. You know, a traditional approach is like teach the Romans. And then you go into, if you're, you know, focused on Europe, uh, folk, uh, then go into like the Middle Ages and do that kind of thing. And like what I've done in the past was uh, like right before like the age of exploration and the, and the, the, the colonization era with Columbus is before I start that, you know, 
put in the Americas and be like, all right, now let's take a snapshot of the Americas and bring that all the way up to 1492, right? And then start to talk about it. But uh, yeah, it can be hard. Maybe that's one of the reasons why we have these these misconceptions of what events were going on at different times, because it's hard to teach multiple things at the same time, When especially when they're things that don't impact each other. Like the development of the Aztecs has nothing to do with the Reformation, you know what I mean? And then the Renaissance. Uh, so, you know, it can be hard to do that. But anyway, this was a cool concept. Uh, liked what's going on here. Let me know what you think. Are there any others that you can think of that kind of blow your mind? Maybe that wasn't on this list. Let me know down below. All right, everybody. Thanks again for watching. Original video link is down below. We'll see you next time. Bye.